Hi, I'm Casey. I'm a professor in an information science department, and I've been doing a series of videos to help people who are applying to PhD programs. So once you're through the actual application process, you've submitted your materials, one thing that might happen is that you get invited to visit a program that you applied to. Sometimes these are called site visits, open houses, on-site interviews. Now I happen to be filming this in early 2021, so if you're watching it right away, it's almost certain that these kinds of visits are going to be virtual only. However, if you're watching this from the future, I really hope that you're getting to fly around and visit lots of different places. It's also possible sometimes that if you are not currently residing in the country where that program is, you might also be participating in some kind of virtual visit. It's kind of variable whether departments have the funds to fly out people from outside the country. Now, first thing, do not panic if you have not heard from any programs about this kind of thing. Not every program does this. Not every discipline does this, really. Also, sometimes these site visits happen before people are admitted into the program, and sometimes they happen after people are admitted into the program. This, of course, changes the dynamic a little bit, depending on which situation you're in. If you've already been admitted, then it's more like a courting, I guess you could say. Where you decide to get your PhD if you have options is a huge decision. And so that's what these kind of open house style site visits are like. They're wanting to give you all of the information that you need to make a good decision. On the other hand, sometimes these site visits happen before people are admitted. Sometimes they even function as formal interviews. I'm not as familiar with those. However, even if you have not been admitted into the program when you attend an open house or a site visit, you are on a very short list at that point. Obviously, they're not flying out everyone who applies to the program. And in those cases, it's still also kind of according. They're not going to do two of these, obviously. So if they make an, an offer of admission to someone, they hope that they'll come. This is a strange dynamic. It's really similar to academic job interviews, actually. On the one hand, you're on an interview. On the other hand, if they make an offer to you, they really, really want you to come. And so you have to make a really good impression so that, that candidate wants to come there. In any case, I'm just going to give you some general information about how these things work based on my experience and also mostly people in my field that I've talked to. A lot of this advice, I think, will apply kind of regardless of the structure of this and should also apply if the visit is entirely virtual as well. As my usual caveat, I am in a computer science adjacent field. So that's where most of my knowledge about norms and practices come from. And I don't completely know how this might be different in other disciplines and other types of programs. I'll also note that my experience with these is only from the point of view of a current PhD student who is helping with an open house for prospective students and from a faculty member who has both organized and been involved in these open houses. I actually didn't go to my own. I only applied to one PhD program and I knew I was going to go there and I was in law school at the time and didn't want to miss class. <laughs> All right. so. First, take a minute to celebrate because if you have been invited on one or more of these, A, it means that you are on a short list to getting into that program. If you haven't already been admitted already, if so, also awesome. But also, these are really fun. It might be stressful for you, especially if you haven't been admitted yet, but try to also enjoy some of it. This might be one of your first times interacting with a lot of faculty and PhD students, and it can be really amazing. <laughs> so my first tip is, it's very important to talk to current students in the program. 
And this doesn't just mean grilling them with questions about the program itself, but also getting to know them as people. But they're also probably the best people to answer a lot of the most important questions that you have. You want to be able to think about what your life is going to be like when you're in this program, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And they are the window to that. You should also ask current students of faculty who might be your advisors, what those advisors are like. And you can usually tell not even by just the answers themselves, but the amount of enthusiasm that students have when they talk about their relationship with their advisors, it can be really telling. Make sure also that you can talk to them when faculty are not present. You really don't want a kind of censored conversation about, oh, this is the best program in the world. <laughs> Even if they love it there, they hopefully are willing to tell you the things that aren't as great about it because not everywhere is perfect and you certainly shouldn't expect it to be. And you should have the opportunity to weigh the good things and the bad things when you're making this decision. If you don't have an opportunity to talk to current students when faculty aren't present, it's possible that's an oversight or it's also possible it's a bad sign. <laughs> and the other thing is you really want to get to know current students because if you decide to go to this program, there's your friend group or one of your friend group. These aren't just your colleagues. These could potentially be your social circle. The community of the program is actually a really important thing and you're really gonna get to that from talking to current students. In fact, I'll also add to this, make sure that you're interacting with, talking to, getting to know the other prospective students who are there with you. And again, I'm not entirely sure how this might work virtually if this is a virtual visit, but hopefully you'll have this opportunity as well. And one reason for this isn't just because maybe a group of you might decide to attend this particular program, but also even if you go to different places, these will be your colleagues. <laughs> these are the people that you'll be seeing at conferences in a couple of years. You might meet someone at an open house for a PhD program that neither of you go to, and then you become faculty in the same department six or seven years later. <laughs> All right, and of course, in addition to talking to current and prospective students, you should also really try to talk to faculty and in particular get to know the people who might potentially be your advisor. Now remember, unless this is a formal interview, which I don't really have any experience with in this context, think about this as a conversation, not an oral exam. However, I do have a video that is specifically about interview questions and the kinds of things that advisors look for in potential students. So I will point you to that video for these kinds of anxieties that you might have around how to interact with potential advisors. However, you also just want to see how you get along with them. And this is true not just for your potential advisor, but for other faculty members who a might end up being your advisor, but also they might be collaborators or future committee members. It's likely that you'll have one on one meetings that are set up ahead of time and you'll be told who you're meeting with. And so if that's the case, make sure that you look them up, find their website, find their most recent publications, go to Google Scholar and sort by date. <laughs> if you're really nervous and think that this would be useful for you, maybe have a couple of questions prepared about their research. Though I also think that it's totally fine for this conversation to unfold really naturally. And of course, as I noted in the interview video, make sure that you've reread the statement of purpose that you wrote for this program and the kinds of things that you said there. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions about the program itself. If whoever you happen to be talking to, a faculty member, doesn't know the answer, they'll point you to the program director or an admin assistant or someone who will know. You also might consider bringing up things in conversation that are important to you. For example, if there is a critical theory that you love, see how they react to it. <laughs> All right, and a third piece of advice is be a person, <laughs> particularly if you're not admitted into the program yet. It is reasonable that you will be nervous 
and you will be worried about coming off as your very, very best and sounding smart. Just make sure that you're not so consumed with saying the right thing and sounding smart that who you are isn't coming through at all. Again, this is in part about getting to know people and seeing how the fit is. And fit is a lot about research and that kind of thing, but also how you fit in with the community. And that's something that you will want to know as well. And if all you can think about is, am I giving the right answer? You're also not gonna get a sense for what it's like to really interact with people on a personal level. All right, and my next piece of advice, and this is really important and I hope obvious, don't be a jerk. <laughs> now let me give you some examples of jerky things. <laughs> and this applies to everyone that you interact with. Do not be rude to admin staff, for example. And I mentioned this in my interview video as well. If you're rude in an email to the person who's helping you book your flights, that is absolutely the kind of thing that faculty might find out. Be a nice person. Everyone's trying to help you. <laughs> and remember, even if you're already accepted into the program, it's important that you make a good first impression. And one thing to add to this is don't badmouth particularly the program that you're at, but even other programs that you've applied to. You know, don't say something like, well, this is my safety school. I guess I'll go here if I don't get into some other university. It could be that the prospective student that you're talking to, this is their dream school and that might make them feel bad. Also, this is a place where you might want a job someday. <laughs> which is another reason not to be a jerk. Even if you've decided that you don't want to attend this program, the faculty that you're meeting might be potential collaborators, they might be future job interviewers, they might be future tenure letter writers. And also, again, the other prospective students are probably going to continue to be your colleagues for a long time. Though another thing to keep in mind is that not being a jerk doesn't mean you have to be the life of the party you should be professional as well, of course. And another thing to note is that when these are in person, I assume this won't be an issue with virtual visits, events sometimes have alcohol. It is completely fine to turn down a drink. Do not feel weird about that. But also if you do decide to drink, be smart about it. <laughs> All right, another piece of advice, and this is a piece of advice that I will continue to give you through your PhD journey into faculty life and a piece of advice that I give to myself every day. Do not compare yourself to other people. This is so, so hard to do sometimes. I'm just warning you ahead of time that imposter syndrome will rear its ugly head during these events. You're gonna be comparing yourself against current students. Am I as good as this person? You're gonna be, of course, comparing yourself to prospective students, especially if you haven't been admitted yet. Am I as good as this person? Remember, everyone is different. Everyone's research is different. Their interests are different. Their personal situation, their lives are different. And if you are at one of these events, you have already made it through a stack of applicants and there is something special about you. So just try to keep that in mind. All right, and one of the last things that you're gonna be doing at these events is trying to imagine your possible future. What would it be like for you to be at this university and in this program and with these colleagues? Now this doesn't just mean research, it means what would it be like to live there? What would it be like to be part of this community? What are the non-academic things that influence your quality of life? Maybe it's weather, access to activities that you love, cost of living relative to the stipend that you'll be receiving. Will you have a desk? Does it seem like a nice place to be and work? A lot of these things you can get, again, from talking to current students in the program, but you shouldn't be afraid to ask these kinds of questions. Basically, what is your life like? What do you like about it here? 
Now, unfortunately, a lot of this will be really challenging if this is a virtual visit. One of the great things about in-person open houses or site visits is that you get to see the place where that program is. You get to see the space where you'll be working. Sometimes you get to experience something about the locale. I'm in Boulder, so it's very common during these for students to go hiking if they want to, for example. So if you're in that position, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the thing that I can suggest is just, again, talk to other students about this. Ask them how they spend their weekends. Ask them how they like the weather. Ask them where they live and how they like it. Just try to get to know the place as best you can by talking to the people. And then after this, if you have multiple offers to PhD programs, you get to decide where you're going to go. That's why all of this is so important in part. That's a hard decision to make. And that will be the topic of another video. Both how do you judge a prospective advisor because that can be such a big decision and how do you judge an entire program. So that will be forthcoming. In the meantime, I hope that this was useful in giving you a sense of maybe what to expect on these kinds of site visits, open houses, and the kinds of things that you should look out for and do while you're participating in them. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, if you are at this point in the process, congratulations and good luck. I'm Casey. Thanks for watching.